the other thing on things on the docket today, one of them is this Florida documentary that is coming out, which uh, if if you too, if you're old enough, if you're our age, you probably remember those Urban Meyer Florida teams. Remember, Urban Meyer was incredible Ooh. at, uh, I think, Bowling Green first, then Utah. Then he comes down to Florida and he awakens uh, the giant that had been slumbering since Steve Spurrier, and they go on a tear, man. Two national mm. championships, the Tebow mania phenomenon, Heisman's, Percy Harvey, a, 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 a team with Tim Tebow and Aaron Hernandez, right? Like it has to be one of the most fascinating gumbos of humans that we've ever seen in our entire lives. And now it appears that uh, we could be getting an inside look into all of this, Aaron. So I ask you, when I throw out, you know, Florida Urban Meyer documentary, uh, what do you immediately get most excited for? I just hope they got Tebow and Urban in it. I think that's that's a big you know, mystery for everyone right now is like what players are coming out. Like I, I, they have to have those two. To me, you you can't do a documentary if you don't have Tebow or Urban. And I would think Netflix would know that. And wouldn't push forward without those two guys. So I'm kind of banking yeah, on the fact that you'll sure. get both of them in there. So I'm excited to hear the stories. Obviously, we all want to know, you know, what what did you know Tebow's teammates really think of him as a leader, as a person? Did they buy what he was selling both on and off the field? Um, it was an interesting team. I mean, I grew up in Florida. I went to a lot of the games. I went to a lot of practices. I went to a lot of the meetings. During spring, you know, I was heavily recruited by Florida, so I got to know, you know, some of the players pretty well, and kind of got to see those guys interact um, at, at all those, those those times. It was an incredible football team. I mean, just when when you and I were going through the list pre show of the guys on that team, from yeah, Tim Tebow to to Rainey to Demps to the guys on defense from Joe Hayden and Spikes and Ahmad Black, you're, Carlos Dunlap. I'm just like my. God, were they loaded? I mean, Joe those, Hayden those was on those years. teams. I did not yeah, remember Joe Hayden, Joe was, Hayden on was on that team. Those teams too. Oh my God, dude! I mean, uh, Percy Harvin, uh, some of the most talented teams that we've ever ever seen during the, that three years span. So, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh God! No, I'm just saying, like, with, with how talented they were, but how different they were, and how this is also I want to know too of we always hear the rumors of urban wasn't always in control who was actually running the show how much say and power did the players have like to me i I'd never really bought that because getting to know urban Meyer during the recruiting process he was stubborn he was persistent he yeah. was in your face and to think that he would kind of sit back and let the players kind of run the show and kind of just say hey you know, as long as we're winning football games, I'll let you guys do whatever the hell you want to do. I just, it's always been a little bit hard for me to buy that. So I'm interested to see what the player's response is to if that is brought up about how was Mer Urban day to day and kind of controlling some of the characters on that football team. I just want to see, um, yeah, I, I, like I, I, I ideally want a down the middle podcast here, which maybe sounds boring, right? But, but I don't want like an overly, overly saccharine, like, uh, you know, everything was so good and Tim Tebow and they oh, don't even no. get into some of the grime, but then I also don't want like the full hit job treatment, right? Because there was a lot of good on those Florida teams. Like you don't have the success that they had. You don't win the championships they did unless there's a lot of good going on there. Right. So ideally I just want a true behind the scenes, honest look, I'll, I'll see if we end up getting that because like you, like you kind of allude to Aaron or it, or are you going to be able to get Meyer and Tim Tebow? If you're going to be that honest about the situation, because there's going to be shit in there that they don't like to, to hear right about Meyer's leadership. Or maybe they maybe want to tell their Tebow. story. Uh, and, yeah, maybe they want to give their side. side of it, right? Well, we didn't know this about Aaron Hernandez. So it's, it's, it's going to be fascinating. Hello there, fellow homeowner. I've got some very exciting news for you. Okay. Angie's list is now just Angie, but it's still your home for everything home. Look, I've been in my house for about five years now and I absolutely love it. I don't want to go anywhere, but you know, it's, it's an older house. So, 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 so I had to get like the siding redone. I had to get the stucco redone. And although I may look like the epitome of a handy man, it may shock you, dear viewer, but I am indeed not. 
handy. In fact, I don't know what the heck's going on with any of this stuff. So you know what I do? I get out my Angie app and in just a few simple tippity taps, I have access to over 220 thousand professionals from which to choose. What I love is, look, I love Baton Rouge, right? And so it's all locally based. And I can actually look at the reviews of what other people in my area, who they've used. And so what I do, I got on my NG app. I got my jobs lined up. I don't lift a finger. And the siding looks incredible, y'all. I basically live in my backyard now. And that's thanks to Angie. So what are you waiting for? Download the Angie app today, A-N-G-I, or go to Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I.com. Angie, your home for everything home. I think that uh, I think that one thing I will be interested to see, but I feel pretty strongly about is this idea of like, well, how did Tim's teammates really feel about him? And yeah. to me, it's like, if a guy's that good, um, it's kind of like Drew Brees mm-hmm. a little bit when he was with the Saints, like, you may think he's a cheese dick, but you're going to be uber loyal to him because he's winning championships. What about Russell right? Wilson? Like, what about Russell Wilson? Uh, right yeah, now? yeah, right yeah. Now, Russell's right, the best it, it example. Was when he was Russell's good. super cheese dicky, but the guys <laughs> in the team still kind of back him. He's definitely cheese dicky. Yeah, I dude. Mean, but do God, they back like him the in extreme. Denver though? I, I don't think they do because he's no longer <laughs> balling, dude. His, dude, that D lineman almost fought him for getting on him last year. Russell Wilson's teammates okay, backed him publicly is, because they had to. Who's the bigger cheese dick in in, mm-hmm. in their heyday? Russell, Drew Brees, or Tim Tebow? Got to go, Russell. Got to go, Russell. I think Wilson. Russell probably takes home the award. Now, I did yes. see a very interesting perspective from Ryan Leaf on this, where Ryan Leaf worked with the same life coach that Russell Wilson did. And um, he's a guy who sadly passed, and it actually coincides yep. with Russell kind of losing it as well, which is all very intense and sad. But um, I can't remember his name, but this guy's philosophy was essentially that Mo- Mo- there is Mo- – Is that what it was? So, But there yeah, is zero yep. – uh like like zero negativity allowed in your brain space right like you're just you're not allowed to engage with even a sliver of it and so when you start to view russell through that lens you see okay this is like crafted and practiced at like like he has really tried to maximize staying as positive as possible and look we love positive people right but overly positive guy can't be a bit much Sometimes you gotta you gotta accept the reality of the shit that you're currently in and accept. Yeah, I don't the think Tebow was like great. overly positive. Like Russell's overly positive. Tebow, I think that what made Tebow so unique is is the bringing of religion into the the locker room. And yeah, and I wouldn't true. say like he never. I don't. I wouldn't say like he force fed it to the team, but like he was very open about his his religious and his faith and how he uses his faith to kind of guide his life and guide him on the football field and in the classroom and this and the other. And I just think for a lot of guys who just want to get in there and just play football, like I don't want to deal with school. I don't want to deal with anything else. It's like, give me a football. Let me go be a meathead. And you got Tim in there preaching the gospel. You know, he was such a great player that I'm sure guys were just, you know, they, they, they just kind of maybe if you didn't agree with it, just let it roll right through you. But if he wasn't a great player, I don't know if that would have flown in the locker room at all. That's 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 yeah, what I mean, Tebow is a little bit different. I don't think it's like a Tebow is this ultra positive guy that came in there and and he was, but not like I don't think he was to the extreme. It's it's to me it's the no no I agree I agree no no he's not as Thomas Dare points out if we were to trademark cho- super cheese dicky here on snaps um I super would not give that dicky. label to to Tim no. maybe a little cheesy but I don't know if he goes full cheese dick. like like maybe may, and, and even Drew maybe not as much but whatever the point is he's just kind of you know he's wholesome and the locker room is yeah, not always a, a wholesome place but uh but but I would follow the guy that's winning two Heisman's winning a national yeah. championship uh I would follow that guy into hell because he's bringing me success yeah. and also I mean look man I don't care about how you're living your life a lot of people nope. Um, enjoy going to church and Bible study. Yeah, even if they want to, you know, have a lot of sex, you know, premarital sex, and do other things that you know, more hardline people may consider being sin. So, like, I, I, I don't think, um, yeah, I, I don't see this being too much of a locker room issue. Okay. Uh, Emil raised an interesting point, saying it'll never not make me laugh that Dan Blazarian, Ryan Lochte, Tim Tebow, Percy Harvey, and Joe Kim Noah. We're all at the Florida campus at the same time. 
in the mid to late 2000s. Dan Bazarian was there? I guess so, dude. I don't know.